After this very important review of records and history, let's move on to the clinical examination itself. It's very simple. It has to be extremely methodical, with three main parts. Inspection, your eyes, palpation, your hands, auscultation, your ears. These three steps must be followed in that order. Inspection first with vital elements such as the examination of the respiratory rate. The examination of the respiratory rate is a crucial stage and is often underestimated. It will allow you to detect dyspnoe at rest and to find out whether this is inspiratory or expiratory and therefore obstructive or restrictive. It will give you some decisive elements which in many cases will be far more important than the complementary examinations. Straight away, a very important part of the inspection is to look at the respiratory rate. How is this terrified dog breathing? It's easy. You just have to track the movements of the thorax. Here there is no dyspnoa, either inspiratory or expiratory. There is not even the other sign of panic, which is hackling respiration. So we can say that this respiration rate is normal. The characteristics of the cough, which you listen to directly with the dog coughing on the table, are also decisive. For example, a chronic bronchitis cough will be particularly loud and wet. A tracheal collapse cough will be particularly loud but dry, and a cardiogenic pulmonary edema cough will be slight and wet. This is a caricature, as there are other intermediate criteria, but these elements would nonetheless provide the guidelines for your diagnosis and, as a priority, further examinations. Still on the subject of the inspection, the dog's behavior on the table is also very important. Here you can judge the dog, perhaps frightened as he's trembling, but otherwise calm. This is not chronic nerves, and chronic nerves will always be an aggravating factor in coughing frequency. It is also important to examine the mucous membranes. As with an internal medical examination, the mucosa will show anemia, congestion, or perhaps even cyanosis, blue coloration of the mucous membranes, in a number of highly specific cardiopathies. The second stage is palpation. It is also very important and, unfortunately, also underestimated. This stage should start with a palpation of the apex beat on the left, and now the intensity of this apex beat. The cardiac rhythm, the heart rate, can already be estimated before you even use the stethoscope. But it is important to compare this palpation of the apex beat with another simultaneous palpation of the femoral pulse. And this almost puts an electrocardiograph in your hands. If there is a big discordance, i.e. an apex beat which is much higher than the femoral pulse, and therefore what we call a pulse deficit, it means there is a major rate disorder, which will show you that the first complementary examination to be performed before all the others is an ECG. Two other aspects of palpation are important. First, the palpation of the cervical trachea, which may turn out to be flaccid and soft, triggering intense coughing, which immediately gives you the main etiology of the cough in these small dogs. The second aspect of palpation, which may also be important, is to press on the mucosa, in particular the gingival mucosa, to see the capillary filling time, which will give you an idea of the pumping power of the heart, most notably that it is weak if this capillary filling time exceeds three seconds. Et notamment de sa faiblesse si ce temps de remplissage capillaire dépasse trois secondes. You exert pressure on the buccal mucosa and calculate the time in seconds for this mucosa to recolor. Once you have pressed, it should go from white to pink in less than three seconds, unless the pumping power of the heart has been weakened, which is the case with dilated cardiomyopathies, for example, where this time will be longer than three seconds. It is extremely simple and gives you the solution before you even do an echocardiograph. So after your eyes and your hands, it is the turn of your ears. In other words, 
auscultation. Auscultation is both cardiac and respiratory. Cardiac auscultation should always be done in the same order. With cardiac auscultation, you have to detect the frequency and rate, the intensity of heart sounds, added sounds, and murmurs. In this cardiac auscultation, the auscultation of murmurs is definitely the most important element. It is what will provide precision, which is sometimes crucial. This auscultation should be dynamic. In other words, the stethoscope is not immobile, but moves around the thorax, left and right. It must move over the apex, cranial, dorsal and mediothoracic areas. Each of these areas corresponds to a specific entity, and so you absolutely must keep your stethoscope permanently moving in order to analyze the murmur criteria. Your stethoscope must move constantly over the dog's thorax, first to the left, but not only over the apex zone. You have to move towards the cranial area, towards the dorsal area. For the arterial duct, the murmur is even located below the scapula. And above all, don't forget the auscultation of the right-hand side. There are murmurs such as the tricuspid in its sufficiency, murmur or the interventricular communication murmurs which can only be heard on the right, not the left, so it is a dynamic examination. Here are the cardiac auscultation areas in dogs in more detail. So imagine this little medium-built animal, a heart rate at 45 degrees in the thorax. You have a first area of auscultation, which is the apex beat, the apex area, this is the area of the mitral valve. If you move up slightly to the middle of the thorax, cranially, you will get the auscultation area of the aortic valve. If you move down ventrally, but more and more cranially, in the third space, you will get the auscultation area of the pulmonary valve. Lastly, on the left, moving up to below the scapula, which everyone forgets, you will very cranially and very dorsally get the auscultation area of the arterial duct murmur. It isn't finished. That is the left auscultation. Your auscultation of the dog is now on the right, and there you have two important areas. One below, the right elbow, the auscultation area of the tricuspid, and one mediothoracic area, which is the auscultation area of the ventricular septal defects. So those are the main auscultation areas in the dog. This distribution in space is extremely precise, much more than in felines, and therefore full of information.